Hello, my name is Andy from Oxford Computer Training. You're about to see an excerpt from one of our Azure AD Connect videos. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to our Azure AD Connect identity expert. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're now going to cover a topic which we've touched on in various places already, but we're going to pull it all together here. So different ways of filtering your data in the sync engine, domain and OU filtering, attribute-based filtering, group-based filtering. First, a reminder about where you can configure these different types of filtering. For domain-based filtering, you would normally set it up on the wizard. There are some things you can do in the Sync Service Manager, but you're probably better off doing it in the wizard. For OU-based filtering, you initially set it up in the wizard, and you can absolutely subsequently change it in the Sync Service Manager, as you've seen in uh, a recent demo. Uh, there's, there's no penalty for doing so, and it is much quicker than running the wizard. It's absolutely fine to do. Attribute-based filtering, that's uh, filtering of the, the scope filters in our rules, that's only ever done in the rules editor, that's for sure. And then group-based based filtering, which we have to keep reminding you is for pilot purposes only, is only ever done in the wizard. So domain and OU filtering. The AD connector configuration is done initially in the wizard. You choose the forests and domains that you want, and for each of them, you optionally choose OUs. You can just leave it as the default to include all OUs. That's what happens with the express installation. But that's frankly a bit sloppy. Uh, we don't need to include everything that's in uh, our AD just because we need to include the users and groups of interest. Also, you can gradually roll out uh, your users and groups by using that different OUs. Uh, the way you configure it is using that tree of checkboxes that you see there, and by now you're probably familiar with, in a perfectly straightforward way. And in the Synchronization Service Manager, you use an exactly analogous way of doing it. It looks a little different, but functionally, it's exactly the same. So you can modify the OU choices you made earlier. It's definitely quicker than running the wizard all over again. There are some other things that you can do with domains, but I think they're probably best done in the wizard. Because you can do some things and not others, probably stick to the wizard. And then, uh, of course, the whole point is that only the objects that are discovered in the selected domains and OUs will be imported into the connector space and hence included in the synchronization. One last thing to say is that these checkboxes do have four states, which is not entirely obvious at first. They can be checked and unchecked, but they can also be grayed and not grayed. And by judiciously clicking uh, checkboxes at different levels, you can get it to look the way it does. So the important thing to grasp there is if you look at the Europe checkbox uh, for either of these, uh, the way that that's been done is if you were to add an OU under Europe, it would not automatically be included, uh, whereas uh, if you were to have uh, a new one under Sweden, it would be automatically included. And that's what the, the greying out is telling you. The, gray out, the grayed outness means it's partial, and if it's partial, new OUs created under that won't be included. Attribute-based filtering. So here we're talking about the scoping filters of synchronization rules. This attribute-based filtering decides, based on the data in an object, whether a rule should apply to that particular object, based on its attribute values. So for inbound, we're asking whether a CS object should join to a Metaverse object or provision a new Metaverse object, flow attributes to one, or disjoin from it. And for an outbound one, should a Metaverse object provision a CS object, flow attributes to it, or disjoin from it. So all of those things are, are, are altered depending on whether the rule is in or out of scope. Any attribute can be used in scope. Uh, so for example, we saw one where only if a male nickname contains a value, or we could say if a domain has a particular value, if an account is enabled, we've seen those kind of examples. A really important one that we very briefly introduced and we're going to be talking a lot more about shortly is cloud filtered. So cloud filters controls cloud object provisioning. And the, the way to see this is that in the generic case for which 
Azure AD Connect was originally written, we might in principle be provisioning to many different systems. And in order to do that, you would make sure that an object got provisioned into the metaverse and then from the metaverse decide whether to provision it in system A or B or C. Now, we only have system A, Azure AD. So it's curious that it's being done this way. We could control whether something gets provisioned into Azure AD by simply deciding whether to put it in the metaverse at all. But because of that original philo philosophical intention, we always put the object, nearly always, put the object in the metaverse and then decide whether to provision it into the cloud. Hence, cloud filtered. Is this filtered and so not going to be in the cloud? Or is it unfiltered, in which case it will end up in the cloud? And the cloud filtered attribute is what controls that. So the way it works is that our inbound rules set cloud filtered to either true, which means do not do this, do not provision this into the cloud, or null, meaning I, I've got no opinion on it, fine, go ahead, but I'm not going to stop another rule from setting it to true. So another lower precedence rule can come along, set it to true, and that way any rule can stop the action of uh, something being provisioned into the cloud. Now, this may seem a funny way around of doing it. Why not do it the other way around? Why not have a sort of positive filter which says, put this in the cloud? Well, it turns out this works rather well, for, as, you, as you'll come to see. Um, no cloud object, therefore, is provisioned if cloud filter turns out to be true. And the way that's arranged is that the outbound scoping filters, the, the scoping filter of any outbound provisioning rule, has cloud filtered not equal true, meaning it should only go ahead if cloud filtered isn't set to true. Null is used simply to allow any other system to make use of this, uh, any other uh, rule to make use of this system. So this is about all the rules working together. They only ever set cloud filter to true to say I'm stopping this or null to say I'm not doing it, but anybody else can. If you do not follow this negative filtering idea, you'll get into all kinds of trouble. You'll be constantly fighting against the default rules. If you can th think in these terms and have your rules fall into line with this philosophy, then you're going to fit in with the default rules and everybody's going to be happy. Here's a cloud filtered example. This is a, t uh, a scoping filter uh, taken from a typical provision rule, out of the box rule. Uh, it's an if statement with a whole series of conditions ordered together. And so it's saying basically, if this is true, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, set cloud filter to true and prevent uh, provisioning into the cloud from happening. Otherwise, set it to null because there may be some other rule somewhere else which wants to set it to true. And it's, it's actually quite hard to see how else you would do this. But as you see more of this, you'll see how this fits together well. It's easy enough to add further conditions for unusual situations in which you don't want a user to be provisioned by simply adding another one of those in with another or another of the double pipes. And this is saying, you know, if it's a critical system object, we don't want that in the cloud. If, the SAM, if there's no SAM account name, don't want it in the cloud. If it's a special account of one kind or another, don't want it in the cloud, and so on. And if you had additional ones of your own, you could just add your own conditions with a pipe symbol into this, or you could even simply add your own rule, which flows uh, uh, true in other cases. And because of this idea of flowing null, if it, if it isn't already true, uh, it means that you can easily add your own, uh, your own rule and they'll work together. You have been watching an excerpt from one of 26 authoritative demonstration and explanation videos in our Azure AD Connect video series. If you'd like access to more free resources from us, want to find out more about these videos and the other courses that we offer, please visit our website. Thank you for watching.